Hey, how's it going? It's good. Yeah, it's good. What a beautiful spring we have going on right here in Minnesota. Oh, now. it's finally nice out. And it is finally episode 11, which is almost actually halfway. Almost, but not quite. This is In Boot Camp, episode 11. Node continued on Saturday, March 30th, 2019. With your hosts, Matthew Petchel and Ryan Rampersad. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash IB11. Almost. Just like it's almost summer. Yes, but, uh, you know, it's still going to be plenty cold. I mean, it barely was above freezing for most of the day today. Yeah, this is actually kind of nice because it's keeping all the bugs sort of dormant. So we'll, we'll enjoy that for a little bit more. Yes, and then, you know, it becomes road construction and mosquito season. And then all of the summer drivers come out and it takes me forever to get to work. Yes, um, it's going to really hinder my ability to get to the U coming up because they're going to be working on the 35W, the only way to get to the University of Minnesota's St. Paul campus. I don't know if it's the only way. The only way I want to go. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. I mean, it is a, literally a straight shot right into the road there. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, the University of Minnesota and its campus, uh, we should talk about your boot camp. Yeah, uh, we just started week 11. Week 11. Yep. And so last week you were learning Node, and that was the kind of the beginning week. Now, you actually were doing some other stuff last week, too. So you were also doing your group project one last week, and that's done now. We've all moved on and recovered. Uh, and then you started learning Node. Yep, and that's, we continued on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And the, today, Saturday, we moved on to just more JavaScript stuff, and we had left Node behind. Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But let's let's talk about some more Node stuff. Last week, you know, I asked, like, how did, uh, you know, everybody do with having to use a new thing installed on all of their machines? And, you know, you said there were sort of mixed results on that. And... Everyone starts at a different spot. But uh, now, after, by the end of the day, Thursday, everyone was very comfortable with it that was going to get it. There's still some people that just don't. But as a whole, we are doing much, much, much better. And, you know... The cool thing about NPM and just being able to steal so many other people's code, it's... See, you, you call that steal, and I, 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 we, need to get, we need to get that terminology changed up a little bit. It is called use. Yeah. So we had a couple exercises that built off each other. Like we had, we were using uh, whether JS is node module um, to, you know, you give it a city, state, uh, street address and everything else. And it would tell you the weather in that area kind of questioned it a little bit because yeah you know i don't know where they actually get the data for but um it, it's very very easy to use um and we're using axios instead of jquery because i mean we played with a weather api thing four or five weeks ago when we were first learning ajax and now we're using axios and using node for everything um we use the MapQuest api and then at the end of the day we had to use uh both mad MapQuest and uh weather js in the same exercise and it was i like it when they take the time to make these things that build off of each other and come full circle it makes it kind of realish there were some interesting things about about that lesson so you were using axios instead of jquery can you tell me what axios is it just makes an HTTP request like it's, so it's just like how a browser and it just it gives you everything unless you tell it what you want. So you could use it to pull down an entire thing. Like you, if you wanted to get all the H1, to, if you wanted to get everything, there's multiple things we could do with it. But you can also just make specific API calls for it. Right. And so jQuery has an Ajax feature, right? Like you do dollar get sign response dot, or like or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. So why, why could you have used jQuery instead to do that in Node? I, does npm install jQuery work? I don't know. Yeah, it does work. But would you, could you have used that particular feature in Node? Well, Axios was has like 12 million weekly downloads and is pretty well <laughs> documented and is yeah. bigger. To say to to be fair, I agree. Yeah, I'm gonna use Axios. Yeah, that's a good, good, good idea. I agree. So throughout the week, you've shown me a few, few snippets of of what you've been working on, and one of those things was you had sort of all a, a bunch of different, um, you know, HTTP calls sort of nested in each other, and you, you did say like, you know, callback hell is a real thing. It can yeah. get kind of crazy, kind of deep. So tell me more about that. 
Oh, what was it? So we were doing a... What was it called? It was like... It was a node module called list something, and it was to get strings like you know how we were doing that process rv whatever thing to get stuff from the command line well there's a way in node there's a node module that lets you get in more stuff and so that you you're pausing it until the user inputs something and so it's like a promise and then something happens and it got ridiculous because of how it all ended up being because I mean you the dot then had to start another function which had to get calls and then so let's say um, you some servers down and Axios can't make the call well then that gives an error which will give an error and then it's just every because everything uses as checking for things to be complete and it gets a little confusing to look at yeah and prettier doesn't really help with indenting that much when it comes to this kind of scenario like what like you know how I was complaining about the div soup thing? Like, oh, man, look at all these nested divs and everything else. That, you could just prettier fixed it for you. Like, you could just figure it out. This, it's a headache to look at, so make sure you do it right the first time because you never have to look at it again. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a real syndrome. Prettier can't fix code that's structurally deficient. Prettier can fix syntactical cleanliness, I guess. So I, I, it's it's good for you to experience though those kind of bad coding examples. Like in the real world, you would avoid that at all costs. You would use some other features. So you you used, of course, you you use promises, which is great. Um, but even promise L is still a thing. And so, like in, in more modern times, you might use a you know async await, or you might actually try to structure your code in a different way so that there are some more landmarks and anchors for the logic that you're performing. The further we get along in this boot camp, the more almost to reality we are getting. Um, Cause it's, it's kind of fun to do that. I think, I think the tech is getting more realistic, but I think what's being asked of you still remains unrealistic. Yeah. Cause I showed you the um, constructor thing today and you said that that would just be terrible if that was real. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. I have uh, forward knowledge of the end of the show earlier in the show. So what I've heard is you're basically done with Node. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Oh, yeah. Um, today's class, we, com- we, we, we didn't even talk about Node. Uh, we moved on to more just straight vanilla JavaScript. So do you think it's okay to leave Node so early, or do you think it's okay? Well, we we're just starting to have fun with it. And, um, I mean, sure, we're going to go back to it, I, I bet, but... Yeah, no, I I would wish we stayed on it a little bit longer, but I don't know. I mean, we have a lot of stuff to cover in these 24 weeks. Right. So I think it's interesting. Node is uh, sort of in this strange position where you don't really need to know much about it specifically. Instead, you need to know more about the tools that you use with it. And so, you know, making a, an API in Node, you don't use Node so much as a tool itself instead of just kind of as a foundational kind of platform thing. And then you use things like Express or Postgres to to kind of build on top of it to make something useful happen. Yeah, in two weeks' time, we will be touching on Express. So Excellent. Coming up. Perfect. Well, before then, let's talk about some of that new JavaScript that you were learning today. Basically, we've always had things in one file. Um, I mean, we've included required modules from other spots and stuff, but we've never, you know, we're, st- we're going to, we didn't touch classes today, but I kind of figured they just called it because of how well constructors went with the class. Uh, but no, we started playing with constructors and creating new objects and everything else and then adding new functionality to the object, key pairs and stuff. And So tell me more about constructors. Like, what is that? Like, what does that mean in JavaScript? It creates a new object and it gives it some preset data unless you give it... So if, like, if you pass in something, you could... Um, so... Like, we had a dog. A dog has a wolf thing. It could also, in their example, it was is raining. Um, and so we had some data, but we also had some things that dogs and cats had in common. Um, and mm, it's almost like I didn't rehearse this at all. No, it is hard to describe what a constructor really is. Well, so in JavaScript, there's no difference, right? So the the goal of an object in in um in either language 
is to contain data, to encapsulate it. And that, that encapsulation allows you to have a chunk of data that may or may not have some additional methods, some capabilities attached to it. So as you mentioned, you have a dog. It has a noise property, so you can supply woof to it. And then you could have the dog make noise, and it can woof. Yeah. Uh, I I do I do. Uh, it is very sad that we all are so uncreative in the world that we have to use dogs and cats as our primitive examples for <laughs> prototypical inheritance and regular inheritance, and uh, that's it's very sad. Um, so I I recently taught some classes at work. And I I kind of wrote the section for this at work also. And basically, I said that if you um, are, are working with prototypes directly, um, you know, as a, as a junior developer, basically, somebody blew it somewhere. I don't know if you touched on the prototype too much during class. I think you said that you inferred it from the, the slide. Well, they said something so... So let's say you you had a a cat and a dog, and you made two objects for them and stuff, and then you wanted to have a function that both of them had. You could um, add them to the object, so like uh, the cat would get new functionality, or you could add stuff to the constructor. So the constructor's name dot prototype, and then whatever the function you wanted to add to it or property. So so you you could uh, you could have you saw that the, the doing the prototype thing, like. It it's weird because then you have you make a base function, then you make a bunch of little functions extending off of the prototype, and then you go and use it somewhere, and it's kind of messy because now all of those methods and functions are like co-located and not together, like as opposed to in Java where it's all in one file and it's all sort of within a squiggly bracket zone in a block. Uh, JavaScript just does not have a good syntax for it. Well, until now. Well, so now we have the class syntax. And so the class syntax in ES6 provides a specific constructor function. It also provides a method to include arbitrary methods that are all put onto the prototype by default. And everything just is cleaner and better. Wow. So, sounds like I have some stuff to learn. Yeah, probably. But, I mean, we're spending the rest of this week on this, so... Or until Saturday, so... Tuesday and Thursday will also be JavaScripty, and then we move on to MySQL. Yep. So, um, yeah, like let me know how that goes next week because it's some of this stuff is good to know about, like having your own awareness, but it's not actually practically useful to ever use. Like when you're when you're writing your own JavaScript, when you, how often you write a class really depends on if the framework you're using actually has you write classes or not. I don't find classes very useful in JavaScript, so I no, almost never end up writing them. This week we had a new homework project. Right off the bat, right at the beginning of the things, one of the first things we did was we made a portfolio of, of ourselves. And then we had some placeholder stuff for our work section and stuff. But that was homework one and homework two. And uh, we just turned in homework nine, and that is an updated uh, portfolio. And this time it basically said, this is what we want you to have on there. But you can style it, make as many pages or as few pages as you want. Just make it yours. And so this is the first time they've kind of let us go wild with the homework. Um, for the group project, it was like that. But all our other homeworks have just been, you are calling this file this. You are making this function. You are making that call. Um, it was. It's very, you have to do it at their way. And so it was kind of interesting to do it. And um, on my GitHub, under there'll be a link in the show notes, uh, you can see what I came up with. Yeah, so I think this looks really nice. That uh, I love the background. It's kind of fun. Um, and you even made it mobile responsive, which is pretty fun. That was a requirement for the homework. Uh, that's cool. It's a good requirement. Uh, and the source code looks very clean, almost like uh, it might have been, I don't know, formatted with prettier. Oh, uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> So that's good, and uh, your CSS looks nice. Everything looks good. I think one of the interesting things would be to, and I know they won't do it because nobody ever does it, but this is one of those things where seeing other people's solutions to the same problem can be really helpful. And I know I know at this point in your class, there's there's a significant portion that aren't excelling, but there are still a few of you that are doing really well, too. 
Um, yeah. And I think seeing what other people made here would be also really interesting and good for you too. I got to see one of my classmates and he did a lot of cool stuff with shadows. Like he made a, every section of his site had its own box. Like the, the, the navigation had a box, um, all his little profile things. He put a box around them and they all had these gigantic shadows on them on a really light colored page. And it, it's like this bright yellow with all these shadows. It looked amazing. Uh, cool. And it's something I just, I can't do. Uh, well, and that's fine. I mean, you're not going to uh you're not going through the boot camp to learn all about these design skills. You you're and, you're going through to be able to build what a designer gives you. Yeah. And just googling around on other people's things, I found a lot of cool stuff. Um and so like you know how there's the RGB things for color values and stuff. Well, I just found yep. out this week that there's RGB alpha and you can make windows transparent in CSS and it's really easy. You just add one more value to the end of it and you can make things that. And so on my navigation bar, I have it slightly transparent so you can just barely see the background through. And I thought that added a nice touch and it's just, you only learn these little tricks by Googling. You, you learn the little tricks by Googling after you want them and trying it. Learning those little tricks are the, the the name of the game here. Thinking back, you know, to homework two, I, I think I've come a long way. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Not even halfway done with the boot camp yet. Halfway. Yeah, so I, I know that you do have a regular website up also, and you will switch uh, these two websites in the future, but, you know, when you have more developed content. Yes. Um. So what... On my works page, they did say to pick three of your projects that you currently have to make it, and I wouldn't show those to anyone, even if they were blind. You know, I talk, I've talked to my, uh, about my perspective on the, the, the portfolio aspect of the class. You should do something outside of class that you do for yourself. Yeah, okay. and, 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 and that's good and better than classwork. Because um, I, I, know, I know how what your deadlines are. I know, like, you get a week to do a homework. You get a week. You get, you do maybe two to three weeks to do a group project and that might not be enough to make a really good polished pristine thing like or your something HTML, you want to even make your html and your in your file here this looks beautiful it's well formatted the things are in order it's all good it's proofread it's nice now make an application or a little app like thing that is useful and unique to you that isn't a part of class that meets the same quality threshold for something a little bit more complex. And then that is what um, somebody would like to see versus just some rudimentary slapdash homework from a class. And so I, I, I still, I still stand by the don't show people your classwork theory on GitHub if you don't have to. And I know you have to because you're you're you. They actually check your GitHub for it, but you turn it <laughs> off later, which is great. And uh, thank you, Microsoft, for buying GitHub and making it available to do that. Ah, uh, good old Microsoft. Because otherwise, you used to have to pay for it or just take it off of GitHub and just put it on GitLab where everything was free for ten years. But nobody would be able to tell that updating my portfolio was an actual class assignment. Like so, um, and. Who knows, uh, by the, the end of this, in another 13 weeks, I might say this design looks like crap and come up with something completely different. But for now, I'm just sticking with it and waiting for something to update on the works page. And that then that's one of the, the best parts of this. So when you write the content and you get all the links together and you get all of the... When you get all the things that aren't design out of the way, changing the design is a lot easier. Yep. Because I won't have to rewrite my about page. I... Won't have to change a whole lot. My social links will always be the same. Just changing how they all are will be easy. Right, exactly. Well, that's great. So let's talk about what's coming up. We alluded to this already, but uh, what what's coming up? Tuesday and Thursday, we're continuing our advanced JavaScript. And then after that, on Saturday, one week from today, we will be doing MySQL. So you're going to learn MySQL before you learn how to write a server node. Well, Express is after a week of MySQL. That's weird. Eh, I mean, are you the professor person that got to teach the class? No, which makes me consider not teaching the class further. Yes. Yeah. I. It's weird to me because it seems like it would be easier from a um, 
you know, incremental design point of view to learn Express first, mock an API, and then add the data portion afterward. Um, the other thing that's interesting is that I think it will blow the minds of a lot of your peers because you're, 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 you're doing MySQL is a drastic difference between JavaScript or HTML or CSS. It is not like them at all. Yeah. SQL is not simple and it's not as straightforward. And later down the line, I know we do MongoDB too, so... That is more straightforward. Yeah. But we're not getting to that for a while. Yeah, for a while. Okay, so MySQL next week, and then after that, Express. Yep. And then... Then do you do you have on that horizon uh, a group project sometime after that probably? I'm gonna guess. Yeah, me too. Because um, we have two more group projects left. Yep. I know. Uh, real exciting time. I'm having a good time in class, and we had another dropout though. Another one, huh? It's like three in the last two weeks. Well, I mean, you are halfway in, and you know, if somebody isn't getting it, maybe this just isn't the best use of their time right now. But it is kind of sad to see them go. Also, so you know how um, it is. Everyone's in a small room and everyone has to bring their laptop charging cable and there's only so many outlets and everyone has right. their stuff and bags and stuff. There's a lot more room now. Oh, yeah. Every that week can happen. more and more room. Yeah, I, even during my time at the U, that would, that would also be true. It was very full for the first month and then after that, nobody cared. Yep, no, that is the way of the game. Uh, well, where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me at MatthewPetrol.com, which is about to be updated. Nice. Very nice. And of course, you can find me, Ryan Rampersad, just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Amar, and of course on my website, RyanRampersad.com, where you can find the ribbon. And of course, you can follow us on Reddit at Reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV, and leave us a comment or two or three on many shows that are apparently randomly updated throughout the week. And you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Have a good one. Have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. convergence.